Good evening and welcome to the Gospel Coalition's 2021 Virtual Advent Concert. The Gospel Coalition exists to celebrate the Gospel. The Gospel for all of life, for all the world. So wherever you are in life, young or old, pastor or parent, artist or entrepreneur, the Gospel is for you. And wherever you are in the world, whether you're watching this in England or India, California or Korea, the Gospel is for you. That's why we love convening Christians around the gospel in events, conferences, and concerts like this. Because as we gather together, we're reminded that though we may have differences, we have a shared confession, don't we? Jesus is Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He came here, he died, and he rose again. And when we put our trust in him, we have salvation, we have hope. And that's why we celebrate tonight. Our focus is on Jesus, our Savior, and our hope. Well, the theme of our concert tonight is also the title of a new Advent devotional we just released here at TGC, The Weary World Rejoices, Daily Devotions for Advent. It's a line taken from the classic hymn, O Holy Night. Do you remember? A thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices, for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. Our world is indeed weary, isn't it? Another year of a global pandemic, churches and Christians struggling to maintain unity amidst rising polarization. And yet the weariness of life is no match for the hope we have in Christ, right? For yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. Advent is a season where we can be honest with ourselves about the weariness of life. Indeed, for some, this season is often the hardest. But friends, weariness isn't the last word for you, for me, or for the world that groans for restoration. Why? Because Jesus came in the flesh and he's coming again in the flesh. And this is why we rejoice. This is why we sing. So tonight, with the help of a talented lineup of artists and musicians from around the world, we invite you to rejoice in the gift of Christ our salvation. And so without further ado, let's get the concert started. Grab a hot holiday beverage, sit back, and maybe even sing along as we together reflect on what Christ's incarnation means for this weary world. A new and glorious morn. Hope. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. John 1, 45.
when Christ was born.
For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Isaiah 9.6 Peace. 
Ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain gladness and joy, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Isaiah 35:10. Rocks, hills, and plains repeat the sound. 
sounding joy. Repeat the sounding joy. Repeat, repeat the sounding joy. He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the His love and wonders of his love and wonders, wonders of his love and wonders, wonders of his love. One, two.
The first person ever to hear the good news about Jesus was a low-income teenage girl from a podunk town. She had the most common name among Jewish women of her time and place. She was just another Mary. But then an angel appeared to her. Now, when we think of angels, we tend to imagine the fairy on top of the Christmas tree only bigger. Like take that fairy, make it Christmas tree sized and bingo, there's an angel. But angels in the Bible are terrifying messengers of God who almost always have to tell the humans they encounter, do not be afraid. Mary was no exception. The angel said to her, do not be afraid, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you must call his name Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. This news was extraordinary. The Jews had been living under foreign rule for centuries, kicked around by empire after empire like a soccer ball. But God had promised that one day he would send his everlasting king to rescue them. And the angel's message to Mary is this, that king is coming, he will be your son, his name is Jesus. Mary had a reasonable question, how will this be since I am a virgin? She was engaged to be married to a guy named Joseph, but they weren't yet married. Perhaps she assumed that he would be the dad. But then the angel drops another bombshell. The Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. This news was outrageous. Stories were told of Greek and Roman so-called gods impregnating human women. But the God of the Bible was nothing like those pagan deities. He was utterly transcendent, the one creator God of all the universe, the one who simply is. And yet he chose to take on flesh and grow in Mary's womb. When Jesus was born, we might have thought that God's long-promised king would live in luxury. But instead, he was laid in an animal feeding trough. We might have thought he'd be received as royalty, but instead the Roman-sanctioned king of the Jews tried to get him killed in infancy. We might have thought the promised king of all the world had come to be served. But Jesus said he'd come to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Mary was there at the beginning when she first heard that Jesus would be God's promised king. She was also there at the end when Jesus was nailed to a Roman cross with a sign above his head that read, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. The son whose cries she'd soothed with her milk, crying out to his father in agony. The son whose infant body she'd wrapped up in swaddling clothes and laid in a manger, now taken down from the cross and wrapped in burial clothes and laid in a tomb. What a devastating end to all her hopes and dreams. What a mockery of everything the angel had promised but then, on the third day, another Mary went to Jesus' tomb and found it empty. And as she stood there weeping, Jesus came to her and said her name, Mary. And when she heard it, she recognized who he was. Jesus of Nazareth, risen from the dead, reborn from the tomb, just as he'd once been born from that first Mary's womb. But why? Why would the God of all the universe become a man? Why would he live in poverty and die in agony? Why would the everlasting King of all the world come not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many? Why? Because of love. 
because of love for you and me. You see, we've turned our backs on God and come under God's judgment for our sin, but Jesus came to die to take that judgment on himself. The Son of God was born to die so you and I could live as sons and daughters of God wrapped up more tightly in his love than he was once wrapped up in those swaddling clothes. Mary of Nazareth was a no-name girl from a podunk town until she welcomed Jesus. If you feel insignificant today, unknown, unloved, open yourself to Jesus and know that you were worth the birth and life and death and resurrection of the Son of God. The King of all the universe is reaching out in love to you. And his name is Jesus. Love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. John 
with God the Father and the Holy Ghost to Thee. Him and chant with high thanksgiving and unweary praises be. Honor, glory, and dominion, and eternal victory, evermore and evermore, evermore and evermore, evermore. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. 
It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Ephesians 2, 8 through 10. To set thy people free From our fears and sins release us Let us find our rest in thee Israel's strength and consolation Hope 
of all the earth thou art Dear desire of every nation Joy of every longing heart Joy of every longing heart Hi friends, my name is Melissa Kruger and I serve as Director of Women's Initiatives for TGC. We're so thankful that you've joined us for this Advent concert and we hope that you're enjoying it. I just wanted to take a few minutes to share a few things that we have going on with you. Um, the first, I'd love to share with you a little bit about an Advent devotional resource that we've created as an editorial team at TGC. Um, it's an Advent devotional that goes through different themes around the Advent wreath. And so we look at things like joy and we look at peace and we look at hope and we look at these concepts and each day for 25 days, we just have a devotional reflection that you can read a little passage in scripture and then an opportunity to respond and rejoice to what, what we're talking about that day. Um, we hope that it will be something that you can use on your own. Maybe you could do with your small group Bible study, or you could use that with your family. If you're interested in that resource, you can go to our TGC store and you can find it there. 
The second thing I'm excited to get to share with you about is our TGC National Women's Conference that's coming this summer in June in Indianapolis. We would love for you to join us. We're going to be studying Remember Your Joy, and we're going to be looking at Old Testament salvation stories and how they all point to our greater salvation in Christ. We are Looking forward to this time to be able to convene together um, and study God's word. And we really do hope that this is a time as we look in his word and we look at God's plan for his people, that we can walk away with great joy um, in the reason that Jesus came, which was to save us and rescue us. And so if you're interested in doing that, you can find more information at the TGC website and you can see how to register there. We hope that you'll join us this summer in June. Finally, I just want to mention that TGC is a nonprofit organization, and we rely on the generous donations of people like you who enjoy our resources. So we'd like to invite you to become a part of the work we're doing. And you can do that by being a monthly donor, a yearly donor. Um, you can go and find different ways to give at tgc.org give. We'd love for you to join us over there and see what options there are. And we thank you so much for everyone who supports us um, by using our resources, by sharing them with others, and by being able to find financially give as well. Thanks so much for tuning in to our concert tonight. We hope that you enjoy it. And from all of us at TGC, we hope that you have a Merry Christmas. Lord, 
Oh.